morning. As you can see, I don't look fucked. I'm gonna hit the city. And I just saw a gay Turkish Cypriot guy. He was fully accepted by the family. Sitting together with his old aunt, aunts and uncles and grandmothers. And they were just talking like it's nothing. So I guess that shows you how different the mentality is here compared to most of Turkish mainland. That's a good reminder that this is a completely different place. As you can see here, the Turkish name of Famagusta is Mausa. As I told you, the G is silent, like in Erdogan. Tayyip Erdogan. And I just love how this ruin just stands in the middle of the city. So this is the Otello Castle, which apparently was part of a play of Shakespeare. I don't know what these are good for. Hello. Ah, that did cost some entry, but only two euros, so that's worth it for sure. Nice one. Castle does hold some significance as it's the biggest port in the whole island and it was built in 1310 but then rebuilt by the Venetians in 1492. So I found some kind of hidden garden. Quite overgrown. This being my last day on the quirky island of Cyprus, there was one more thing left to do. One more place to experience. A special place. In fact, it is the single biggest reason why I came back to Cyprus. Farosha. A huge ghost town which no one was allowed to enter for almost 50 years. Six square kilometers of abandoned shit, bullet holes, cracked concrete and avenging nature. And if you watch this series from the beginning, you can probably guess what led to this. Let's say it together. <gasps> Zombie apocalypse! No, of course it's the fucking war in 1974. What did you think? Before that, Varosha was the number one tourism destination on the island. No doubt about it, there's very few places in the world where a decent sized city meets white sand beaches and clear blue water. San Sebastian come to mind, Rio de Janeiro of course, but Famagusta and its suburb Varosha actually topped the popularity list in the early 70s. During its heyday the place was packed with famous people such as Elizabeth Taylor and whoever that guy was and this fancy looking dame. Back then 30,000 beautiful souls were living here. And Varosha was as western as you could get. I mean, the main street was even called John F. Kennedy Avenue. Many storied hotel buildings were shooting out of the arid Cypriot ground, but never actually took to life. Because just before Varosha managed to get properly ruined by inauthentic resort tourism, the Greeks and the Turks fought it out on the streets of neighboring Famagusta in August 1974. Fearing a massacre, the whole Greek population fled at once. Everybody thought they were going away for two or three days, but in fact, they never came back at all. The Turkish army first took hold of the area, which then fell under the control of the UN as part of the Green Zone. From then on, all the hotels, late night establishments and residential houses were left to decay within the all-devouring floods of time. For a long 43 years, nothing, absolutely nothing happened here. Nothing has been touched, it's a total ghost town. There were a few hopes in 2004 as the UN proposed the United Republic of Cyprus. 
a two-state within one-state solution, which included the idea of resettling the original inhabitants of Arosha. But the plan was abandoned as 65% of Turkish Cypriots were in favor of unification, but only 24% of the Greek Cypriots. So it took until 2017 when Turkish military allowed itself access to the suburb and the beach was open to the public, but only to the Turkish or TRNC nationals. Two years later, the TRNC announced it would open Barosha to settlement and planned to open the whole thing by 2020. The Greek Cypriots did not like this at all, but Erdogan then came to town and promoted the idea of reopening. The UN and EU said, come on, can we concentrate on getting friendly with the Greek Cypriots first? And condemned any tries of resettling because it would be a serious violation of the ceasefire agreement. But the Turkish mainland and the TRNC did not really listen. And so, parts of Varosha opened to the general public on the 6th of October 2020, after 46 long years. To this day, the empty city is protected by a UN resolution, which states that it can only be inhabited by its original inhabitants. The TRNC is actually promoting their return. As far as I'm concerned, the former owners can come back and do business here. But there's one little catch as long as they recognize the Turkish Norse autonomy. Well, now that you know the complicated context of this damn place, I guess it's about time to explore it. Let's go! So I just got in through this broken fence. Let's go. It's surreal already. So apparently you're not allowed to go in through the buildings. But no one has spotted me yet. And I think I got in illegally, so nobody knows that I'm here yet. But I'm not sure if I want to use those stairs. Because, <laughs> as you can see, this building is not in the best shape. This beach is still in use, by the way. As far as I know, there is a construction or attempt of construction or reconstruction going on. We'll see if they can restore this place to former glory. Hey, there's the former kitchen. Yep. <laughs> it's quite packed in here. So here's the pool. Quite lush by now. That could have been. Actually, it's a church, of course, because. Do you see those bell towers? Before in 1974, this was all Greek territory. Dikkat! Bina cökkebilir. Bina ıcerisine girmek ve yaklaşmak tehlikelidir. Fancy way of doing this. <laughs> I'm surprised that the road is in such a good state. Probably because nobody drove on it for about 50 years. In terms of stress, this is my favorite city ever. 
Edelweiss, Edelweiss. I guess this used to be a cafe like so many other places. This must have been a great destination for some time. Everything looks so modern and stylish. Well, <laughs> I guess I imagine it to have been. I don't know if I should be excited or sad about this place. I guess I'm both. Interesting. I've never felt this way before. Almost everything is written in English instead of Greek. Well, it turns out this is also the greenest city I've ever been to. The whole thing is a park. The buildings are kept cool by trees that are growing on it. It's very eco-friendly, that's for sure. And there's little to no emissions. The only ways of transport are bikes and golf carts, which are electric. So yeah, this city might, might be the greenest city on earth. But the only way to achieve being green, apparently, is to not, not have any inhabitants, human inhabitants. I don't know what else lives here. Ghosts, raccoons. And there are plenty of areas where you can't go, apparently, which makes me want to go even more. It's for your own safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Okay. So here I am. Inside a building. And the policemen are really fucking lazy. They're just... Staring at their phone all day. There's no other bullets. I see that. Let's see, maybe here. So happy. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Shame. It's forbidden to have such a good view, I guess. This building is not on the verge of collapsing. That's just bullshit. That's just what they write on every. on every sign so that nobody trashes this place even more look at this I'm gonna stay up here for a while I forgot to bring a beer unfortunately so people the lesson here is if you want to have fun break some rules sometimes just be responsible that's the only thing that's important. Don't hurt other people. Just do your own thing. Please. Because everybody's so meek nowadays. <laughs> I feel so old saying that, but come on. Everybody's just staring at the smartphones. You're missing a bunch of life. In the meantime, I'm just doing what I'm doing. So 
that was a fun detour. Okay. I hope nobody's on the screen. Alright, everything calm. Well, if it isn't a British mailbox, after all, this place was pretty much owned by the British for a long, long time. There's the sign of the crown. Probably from Augusta was more of a British expert territory than anything else. I think I got desensitized for abandoned buildings for at least a year now. <laughs> it's not good for me. <laughs> Can't appreciate the ones at home now. Because I've seen so many at once. <laughs> it's not even funny. I guess the lesson of this place is that you can have a nice beach in the city, you can have a nice green city without too much emissions. But the only way to achieve that is to not have humans live in it. Because they're gonna spoil everything with their trash and their shit and their greediness. So why not have more cities like this? But please don't let war be the reason for it to be abandoned. <laughs> and also maybe be more creative with architecture. And these buildings, they all look the same. <laughs> One winner later. Right. Had a beautiful time in Famagusta. Now it's the time to make my way into Nicosia. This one then go to Larnaca. And probably still sleep on the beach there. I don't fully know yet, but the beach is right next to the airport, so that would be quite convenient. Yeah, let's find a bus. Okay, I found my bus. <laughs> Back in noisy Nicosia, where I'm gonna have some food for across the border again. Maybe get some Turkish delights before I leave because those were delightful. Alright, I'm back on the Greek side. Let's not make this political at all. There's no borders in my mind. Um, it's just a very different culture which <laughs> starts within, starts and stops within 10 meters of border. And it's very different, very fast. This side is so much more posh. And as a result, people are a bit more distanced. My last goal after buying the Turkish delights is to get some Lamajun from Friends, which is the shop where I used to get Lamajun all the time because it was just right under my window. And at some point, uh, the guy there said he would just um, drill a hole into the wall so he can just give me Lamajun through the hole. Which would have been nice. There you go, friends Lamajun. So funny that my phone connected to the same old Wi Fi. Well, this is coming home, I guess. 
buildings right here are full of Erasmus people. Fucking and drinking and that's about it. And the rest of the street is basically little Bangladesh. <laughs> They never fixed this thing. It was broken when I came here and it's still broken. So, last thing I had to get samosas. Of course, they're the cheapest thing you can eat in all of Nicosia. Because all of the Bangladeshis are pump, pumping them out, them out like crazy. And they just, they're huge, they're filling, and they just cost 50 cents per piece, which is perfect. Cyprus is expensive, uh, this side at least, and yeah, I had to get by because back then I didn't have a job, so I invested everything into samosas basically. Alright, I've made it to Larnaca, that was a very uneventful bus ride, so now it's the last adventure on this whole travel, which is to find a place to sleep near to the airport. Alright, I need to find a bus. Just hoping it will magically show up at one point. Because <laughs> otherwise it would have to go one hour, which is actually nothing. Considering what I've already <laughs> covered so far on this travel, but I don't know, it's way past my bedtime. I'm grumpy. No, seriously, it's like 8 o'clock, which is normally the time I would go to sleep on this travel. It's funny, yesterday was an exception. I went to sleep at half past 9, which was... Phew, too much. Too much for my old heart. I found the bus stop. Man, I'm so undecided. I don't know if I should wait. This is not... As easy as on the Turkish side, there's fixed schedules here. I don't like that. It makes me feel uneasy. On the Turkish side, you could just like wave a bus over wherever. There are no bus stops. There's no fixed schedules. It was way easier. Man, I hate Europe. <laughs> so as you would expect, I decided to walk. Because I found out there's a shop next to the Salt Lake so I can avoid this terrible road. All right, I think my decision paid off because it's basically a beach here. So I've decided to give a fuck <laughs> to just sleep here and walk an hour to the airport tomorrow. It's right over there. And I'm just hoping nobody else will come by. But I'm gonna be standing up at 6 o'clock in the morning anyway, so wish me luck. No, you don't have to wish me luck. Wish me a good night's sleep. Oh, okay. Good morning. This has been a sleeping place. That's the salt lake. So where are those damn flamingos at? <laughs> they look kind of stupid, but hey, that's just flam how flamingos are. I don't like them. There's hundreds of them. So apparently there's multiple salt lakes. Here's the other one. It's right next to the airport. I guess it's a good fucking source of pollution. Uh, the, the lake seems reasonably healthy, I guess. Uh, finally made it to the airport. After, I don't know, about two hours of walking, maybe one and a half. And I have, I'm shitting my fucking pants. I have to shit so bad. I can't even tell you. Whew. Okay, that's the end of the adventure. Bye. That's it. 
Um, I'm not anymore in a country that doesn't exist. I'm in a country that does exist by UN standards. And as I have internet again. I'm in Europe, I'm in the EU, it's kind of boring. <laughs> no, it's not. It's never boring with me. Right? Alright. We'll see you for the next travel. Next travel is gonna be a surprise. But just a little hint. The country. Wait a minute, which direction? It's right over there. And it's not an island. And they really have good food. That's all I'm saying. Oh, and they're kind of fucked as a country in general. Last clue, okay. <laughs> See you guys. Um, I don't know anything more to say really. I'm really bad at concluding. So I'm just gonna let you enjoy the view, I guess. Yoktur ey dost, derdime çare.